Today I want to talk about the hidden costs of change. Now scope creep is the bane of any project manager's life and the way to deal with scope creep is to have a robust change control process. But changes cost money and often when people are looking at changes they only evaluate the improvement in functionality or the time it's going to take and they don't adequately look at how much it's going to cost to actually make the change. So for every change you consider for your project you should weigh up how much is it going to cost and what is the value. So what financial return or cost improvement are you going to get from being able to implement this change in the first place. Tom Kendrick talks about this in his book Results Without Authority and he says that you should seek verifiable evidence for all value estimates and determine uncertainty by requesting range information. So in other words what you need to make sure is when people come to you with a change request and they submit it saying it's going to be a great improvement for the project really question the estimates that have gone into putting that together. Where do they get the information from? How did they put those numbers together? What justification do they have that it will actually deliver an incremental amount of benefit to the project as a result of making this change? Weighing up the cost and the financial benefits, or benefits that can be monetary but expressed in a different way, so perhaps efficiency gains for example. Those are the kind of things that need to go into the change assessment process. Once you have assessed your change, the outcome is either yes you're going to go ahead and do the change, no you're not going to go ahead and do the change, or you're not going to go ahead and do the change just yet. There's always the possibility that for something that's a good idea and that's perhaps borderline in terms of whether or not it would have a significant impact to the ability of the project to hit its published milestones, you can park it, you don't have to say a definitive yes or no, you could put it in a pile to reassess at a later date. Whatever you decide to do with the change, make sure that you go back to the person who raised it and explain to them why their change has or has not been included or has been put in a separate pile to be re-evaluated later. Put a note in your diary to re-evaluate the change later or make sure that it's brought forward onto the agenda of the next change board meeting and then go back to those people again and say you've had now had the opportunity to re-evaluate the change in light of another month passing on the project or however long it takes before you go back and do that piece of re-evaluation and the new outcome is it's now been accepted, it's now been rejected or it's still on hold pending more information or still on hold pending a change in the circumstances of the project that makes it viable. Those kind of changes in circumstance may be a risk has materialised, an issue has been resolved or you've just got more confidence in the schedule and the budget and you now know that you have a reserve of contingency that you can draw on which would be worthwhile spending or making this particular change. So do think through the cost of any changes that are proposed for your projects and don't ever be worried about saying yes to everything. <laughs>